Bad Rabbit ransomware spreads, sensitive airport docs about the Queen were found on a USB drive, and Google plans to remove HTTP public key pinning. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 31st, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Happy Halloween, everyone! I am not in costume because I am recording a day early and I forgot to bring in my costume. Oh well. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire. That's the best way to support the show, and it will help us reach our next goal. A quick reminder as well, Hack5 is doing a month-long contest over at hack5.org slash contest. To enter for your chance to win daily giveaways, post your creative Hack5 gear photo to Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook with the hashtag, hashtag Hack5Gear, and you could win $100 Hack5 gear gift certificates. Perfect for the holidays. And now, on to the news. So first off, a huge thanks to Eric and Zach for sharing this news over on our Patreon community tab. For the very past week, new ransomware called Bad Rabbit was spreading across Eastern European countries such as Russia, Ukraine, Turkey, and Germany. It was targeted towards corporate networks and demanded 0.05 Bitcoin, which is about $285 as of time of recording, from victims before unlocking the ransom data. According to Cisco Talos, Bad Rabbit uses the Eternal Romance NSA developed exploit, which bypasses SMB file sharing security, which would allow an attacker to remotely control the machine. If it sounds familiar, that's probably because it was also used by NotPetya ransomware earlier this year. Due to the similarities in the code, some researchers are linking the two malicious programs together by the same actor. The Bad Rabbit ransomware was used in a drive-by attack against corporations including news sites, payment systems, and infrastructure offices. It was hidden inside of a fake Adobe Flash Player installation executable, so it required a human's interaction with it to actually initiate and download. Once it was installed, Bad Rabbit would encrypt files with RSA 2048 bit keys and give victims 40 hours to comply to the demands before increasing the cost even more. Interestingly, it also uses free and open source code from a legitimate program, which is called Discryptor, which is basically used to encrypt a user's computer. Currently, there is no decryption software available, but Microsoft did patch the Eternal Romance vulnerability back in March of this year. If you're worried about ransomware, update your computers, obviously. Turn on auto updates if you can. Disable WMI services through the command prompt, and I've included a link with directions below on how to do that, and use good internet hygiene whenever you're clicking on links around the web. And of course, if you do get infected, having a backup plan is key to not having to worry about ransomware and not having to pay a ransom. There are two sides to this security coin. Number one, never plug an unknown device into your computer, especially a USB flash drive. They can be full of malicious data ready to strike as soon as you plug it in. When Hack5 tested this theory of do security researchers practice what we preach, we found that 62 of 100 USB rubber duckies were plugged into computers. That's bad, folks. And number two, if you are using a USB flash drive to carry important sensitive material, keep it safe and keep it encrypted. Big thanks to Michael for sharing this story over on the Patreon community tab. It turns out recently, an unnamed British man found a USB flash drive just chilling in the street and he decided to plug it into a computer at the library. What he found was so sensitive that he turned it over to a Sunday Mirror reporter, but not before sifting through the data. 76 folders containing unencrypted details about Heathrow International Airport were included, maps of the airport, locations of CCTV cameras, routes for the Queen and other political figures, maps of escape tunnels, timetables for security patrols for the airport, and the list goes on and it gets worse. 2.5 gigs worth, all of which would be highly valuable to criminals or threat actors. Now, nobody really knows how the USB drive got there or whether the data was seen by other individuals. Local police and airport authorities heard about the news and are investigating how this happened. 
quite some time ago, Google engineers helped develop HTTP public key pinning. That's RFC 7469 for the nerds like me out there. This protocol was designed to reduce the risk of incidents of man-in-the-middle attacks over TLS connections by pinning or remembering host certificates and matching the certificate fingerprints with that of the host. HPKP for short is supported by Chrome, Firefox, and Opera, but Google Chrome is removing support for it by May 29, 2018. Over time, HPKP will be deprecated until completely unsupported on that date. They decided to remove its support because an attacker could use workarounds to still target a user using malicious pins or compromising a web server. Because of this, Chrome is recommending developers use certificate transparency and the expect CT header for their certs. Luckily, adoption of HTTP public key pinning was rather low, so consumers probably won't see a difference in their browsing. As usual, though, you can check if a site is securely using certificates by looking for that little green lock icon and the wording secure or a certificate issuer name, followed by the website address that you are visiting in the address bar. A big, huge thank you to all of the wonderful people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You are the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week, even on Halloween. We are on the way to our next goal, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment for this set, including that stupid light that decided to die last week, as well as open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each and every month, and that is all of our patrons. Any little bit helps us grow the show, and in return, you'll get access to a bunch of extras on Patreon. Patreon. We might even feature your adorable fur baby in an upcoming episode just like these. They're so cute. Check out the perk levels on Patreon and thanks again for helping us keep the show completely independent. And of course, if you cannot donate, you can hit that subscribe button or you can share this episode on your favorite social media page. And with that, I'm Shannon Morris and I will see you on the internet.